Okay, we are going to uh, give you kind of a, a, a little lecture about our, what I call the toy car lab, uh, that because you are not here physically to be able to participate in this, I had to just video, and I want to give you kind of a background conceptual um, description of, of what you're going to be looking at in the videos that you actually have to watch to collect data from so you also understand what information you need to be measuring. All right, so we're just going to call this Toy Car Lab. All right, now the idea is that uh, this is all about velocity and our equation for velocity literally is a change in position divided by a change in time. And we've already pointed out that usually because of stopwatches, we don't have to worry about the delta T thing, but that is going to be an important aspect in this particular lab. So when we expand this, we get a final position minus an initial position, all divided by a final time minus an initial time. Now, what this means is we have to be able to measure and ask and answer two questions. The delta x part is where are you? Because you have to have a way of pinpointing your location. And then the time thing is when are you there? So we need a timekeeping device uh, or mechanism that will allow us to record when you are at certain positions. So this is what um, I have done, and I've videoed this. Out in the hallway, I set out kind of a, a, a track for, for these little toy cars to, to go along, and I'm going to have to space this out. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, and need to go one more, 10. Um, I put little pieces of tape down on the, the, the hallway floor, starting from position zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, and what I, what I've done is videoed three different toy cars. I'm just gonna draw it as a block. I'm, I'm not a good artist. I'll put a little bit of a bumper on there. Uh, I have three different toy cars that we're gonna be running on this, this course. Now, what you need to realize is that every one of the markers is one meter apart from the other. So when it comes to position, the way that we are locating where is the car is by the little pieces of uh, painter's tape, blue tape, that's on the floor. And they are numbered with whiteout, so um, they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so you know where, where you are in the overall look of the course. Now, just so that you'll know what you're looking at when you see them, these are the little toy cars. Uh, the first one, is this one that we just refer to as the Chevy, because uh, that's what's, what it's, what it's uh, branded with. Uh, the second one is this little guy, uh, the dump truck. And the third video shows this guy, the monster truck. Okay, so uh, these guys, once we turn them on, are gonna head down the hallway, and I just kind of walked along with the iPad taking a movie, um, so that you are able to see when they cross the starting line and when they cross the finish line. Now I am going to kind of give you one piece of information in advance. The dump truck, I actually ran in the opposite direction. And uh, you're gonna need to pay attention to that when it comes to the data collection because technically it does not start at a position of zero, it starts at a position of 10 and then works its way back down to zero. And that's gonna be important when we look at some of the analysis uh, that we're gonna do on this lab. Okay, so 
Now, what do you need to do? You need to be able to record the time that each little car crosses one of these markers. And that is where I did not do any speeding up or slowing down on the video. So you just need to let it run in real time. And what you need to do is use, I'm gonna assume you're gonna be using your phone, the stopwatch function on your phone, that I started the car back here behind the zero marker so that it starts to run up to the starting line. When the front bumper crosses the zero marker, you need to hit start on your stopwatch. Now, there is a, a function on your stopwatch that you're gonna to have to become comfortable with if you are not already comfortable with it. And that is the lap function. What, happened, what a lap function does is it measures the time between two spots, but it allows the stopwatch to keep running. So uh, now I, I did this on my iPhone. And so when the car crosses the zero marker, you hit start. When, it cross, when the front bumper crosses the first marker, you hit the lap button. And what will happen is an amount of time will show up that we would call T1. When it crosses the second marker and you hit lap again, at least on my iPhone, it gave me T2, which is only the time between one and two. When it crosses three and you hit lap again, you get this thing that we call T3. So each time the toy car crosses a marker, you're gonna hit the lap function and you will get the what's called the interval time uh, between the previous two points, T7, T8, T9, and T10. Now remember, when you are gonna use the dump truck, I did say that the dump truck you're gonna run backwards. So that actually means the first interval um, where uh, we're gonna, it's gonna run backwards and, and we're gonna have to input that into our data table in a slightly different fashion. Okay, now if you are fortunate, there are some phones that when you hit the lap button, what it does is instead of giving you just what is called the interval the time, it gives you also the elapsed time, then you will not need to go through the hassle of, of what the iPhone people have to do, and that is to get T2. T2 actually, uh, what we want is the elapsed time all the way from zero to two. So uh, when we go to do the data table on this, uh, if you have an iPhone, you might have to get a calculator and start to add some of these times up. Okay, so that is, that is the data that you're going to collect. And you're going to need to record that in your notebook. And, you know, the proof of stuff that I am going to be asking for is going to be pictures of this, of this raw data recorded in your notebook so that you prove that you actually did it. Um, now, how are you going to display this in your notebook? All right, we have three different cars. We have the Chevy, I mentioned the dump truck, uh, and then the monster truck. All right, oh man, you gotta be kidding me. All right. Anyway, what you are going to be doing is you're gonna have, you're gonna have two columns of data for these guys. The first one is going to be your position measured in meters, and then the second column is going to be a time in seconds. Now, for the position, we are going from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? What we want for the Chevy is the elapsed time all the way from zero up to any given position. So our initial starting time, the assumption is you're gonna hit the start button when it crosses the starting line, so this is gonna be zero, but each one of these subsequent times is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, this is gonna be the same, same as Chevy. Now, the reason I say same as Chevy is because both the monster truck and the Chevy 
are being directed from 0 to 10. I told you the dump truck is going to be run in reverse. So there's going to be something different about the dump truck. We will still put the position as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. But the difference is that because the dump truck is being run in a reverse fashion, our zero for time will be at correspond to the position 10. And so your time as you come up here will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, this is the way I want it done because of what, how we're going to process this. So when you're all said and done with your data collection on this lab, you should have three data tables with this information. Positions and times. And, and again, the Chevy and the Monster will have a similar look in that numbers will appear to increase from 0 down to 10. But on the dump truck, we still run these positions because they're the same positions that we used on each of these. But because we ran it in an opposite direction, the zero for time starts down here at the bottom. Okay? Um, God, I hope that was clear enough for you guys to follow. Um, and you'll have to play around a little bit to become comfortable uh, with, the, uh, with the timekeeping. But in the end, what I am going to want to see are these three data tables with the numbers filled in. That, and so you'll want to put those or kind of create all three maybe on one, one page. And we're going to be making use of these particular pieces of data as we go forward and do some analysis of the velocity of the cars as they went down the hallway. Hopefully that was clear enough. All right. Uh, enjoy your Wednesday. Uh, I did well. Stayed under 15 minutes, which I didn't think I'd be able to do. Uh, and remember, if you have any, uh, if you have any questions, get in touch with me, and we'll do our best to kind of uh, help you out. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. All right. Have a good Wednesday.